Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Kurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Friday, the 23rd of December. India on alert for new variants as COVID wave sweeps China. Pakistan suicide car bombing kills one police official, injures others. And serial killer Charles Obraj walks free from jail in Nepal. And now for all the details, authorities across India have gone into alert mode as the center government has advised of ramping up COVID surveillance to look out for potential new variants that could emerge from the wave of infections sweeping neighboring China. India on Friday logged 163 new coronavirus infections, while the active cases declined to 3,380. India's Health Minister Dr. Mansukh Mandavia on Friday chaired a high-level meeting with state health ministers on the COVID-19 situation and preparedness as the country has gone into alert mode amidst the recent surge in coronavirus cases in neighbouring China. The centre government earlier this week asked authorities across Indian states to keep a lookout for any new variants of the coronavirus and urged people to wear masks in crowded areas. People on Friday queued up at hospitals across the country to get themselves tested with rise in cold and cough infections amid the changing weather. Authorities have also started randomly testing 2% of international passengers at airports as infections have also risen in countries like Japan, South Korea and the United States in recent days. The cases may increase so we should be uh, in a precautionary way so that we should avoid the spread of this virus. So anybody gets this virus they should be isolated. And uh, whoever have the severe symptoms, they should be admitted uh, as, uh, as early as possible to prevent the disastrous effects or to decrease the mortality and morbidity. India has also reported four cases of the Omicron subvariant BF.7, which is driving the huge COVID surge in China. The number of infections has, however, fallen sharply in the past few months. On Friday, the country logged 163 fresh infections, while the active cases has declined to 3,380. Meanwhile, residents of Eastern Patna City visited vaccination centers to get their booster shots. The South Asian nation of nearly 1.4 billion people has administered more than 2.2 billion anti-COVID vaccine doses so far. At least 16 Indian Army soldiers lost their lives in an accident in northeastern Sikkim state on Friday as the truck they were traveling skidded down a steep slope and fell into a gorge, the Army said in a statement. Defense Minister Ratnath Singh expressed pain over the loss of lives of the personnel and offered condolences to the bereaved families. Moving on, suspected militants spread through a checkpoint in Pakistan's capital of Islamabad on Friday and blew themselves up as police gave pursuit, killing one officer and injuring several others. Islamabad Police Chief Suhail Zafar said the car did not stop when police tried to halt it. As they chased it, the people inside the car blew it up. Four policemen and two civilians were injured, he said. The car was packed with explosives and headed for a high-value target in the capital, the Interior Ministry said in a statement, giving no further details. TTP, Tehrike Taliban Pakistan, claimed the car bombing, which came two days after a military operation killed 25 TTP militants after a standoff at a counter-terrorism facility. The group has ramped up attacks after calling off a ceasefire last month that was brokered by the Afghan Taliban in May. More news from Pakistan. Parvez Ilahi, a key ally of Pakistan's former PM Imran Khan, was denotified as Chief Minister of Crucial Punjab Province on Thursday, dealing blow to Khan's plans to force snap polls through a dissolution bid. Ilahi has stamped the move as unconstitutional and has moved to Lahore High Court seeking judicial intervention. A key ally of Pakistan's former Prime Minister Imran Khan, Chaudhary Parvez Ilahi, has been denotified as Chief Minister of the country's largest province, Punjab, dealing blow to Khan's plans to force snap polls in the South Asian nation. Punjab Governor Mohammad Baligur Rahman, an appointee of incumbent Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif, late on Thursday issued a notification to remove Ilahi as Chief Minister. The order states, as Ilahi failed to undergo confidence vote, as ordered by the governor. Therefore, he ceases to hold his office. 
Ilahi, in response to the order, has moved to Lahore High Court, terming the order illegal and unconstitutional. Earlier on Thursday, PTI supporters protested in front of governor's official residence in Lahore. PTI party chairman Imran Khan, in a virtual address to the protesters, accused that the ruling coalition in the Federal Assembly was running away from elections as they feared the public. ये क्यों इतना ज्यादा तमाशा कभी गवर्नर रूल लगा दो कभी कहा जी हम वजीर चीफ मिनिस्टर को हटा देंगे ये क्यों कह रहे हैं क्योंकि ये डरे हुए हैं आवाम से इमरान खान लास्ट वीक अनाउंस दैट ही वुड सीक टू डिसॉल्व टू प्रोविंशियल गवर्नमेंट्स रन बाय हिज पीटीआई पार्टी एंड कोलिशन पार्टनर्स बिफोर दे रिजाइन फ्रॉम द फेडरल पार्लियामेंट अर्ली पोल्स आर मैंडेटेड टू बी हेल्ड इन सच अ सिनेरियो खान हैज बीन डिमांडिंग स्नैप पोल्स सिंस ही वाज आउटस्टेड इन अप्रैल after he lost a parliament's vote of confidence an afghanistan's taliban run administration has closed universities to women partly due to female students not adhering to its interpretation of the islamic dress code acting higher education minister nida mohammad nadim said on thursday the move has prompted strong condemnation from foreign governments and sparked protest in afghan cities <laughs> Acting Higher Education Minister Nida Muhammad Nadeem told Afghan state broadcaster RTA on Thursday that Afghanistan's Taliban-run administration had closed universities to women partly due to female students not adhering to its interpretation of the Islamic dress code. Nadeem said they took the decision as female students were not observing hijab and also over interaction between students of different genders taking place. He said discussions over female education were ongoing. The move prompted strong condemnation from foreign governments and criticism from some Afghans, sparking protests in Afghan cities. US Secretary of State Antony Blinken said that the Taliban were trying to sentence Afghanistan's women to a dark future without opportunity by barring them from attending universities. He called on the Taliban to reverse the ban. What they've done is to try to sentence afghan uh, women and girls to uh, a dark future uh, without opportunity and the bottom line is that no country is going to be able to succeed much less thrive if it denies half its population the opportunity uh, to contribute um and to be clear and we are engaged with other countries on this right now there are going to be costs if this is not reversed if this is not changed The Taliban-led administration had already drawn criticism including from foreign governments for not opening girls high schools at the start of the school year in March making a U-turn on signals it would do. The G7, the group of seven wealthy nations in a statement said gender persecution may amount to a crime against humanity. The backlash towards restrictions on female education is complicating the Taliban's efforts to gain formal recognition and the lifting of sanctions that are hampering the economy diplomats say. And in news from Sri Lanka, a site that was once synonymous with anti-government protest in Sri Lankan capital Colombo has now become a Christmas wonderland with various carnival events lined up ahead of the festival. A public policy expert said it is a sign the government is using to demonstrate its control. A report. The Gulf Face Green Park, a site that was once synonymous with anti-government protests at the administrative center of Sri Lanka's capital Colombo, has now become a Christmas wonderland. The park, just across the country's presidential secretariat, was host to thousands of anti-government protesters for months, who led an uprising this year over the country's worst economic crisis. On Wednesday evening, a massive Christmas tree. composed of artificial lights could be seen occupying the space a few carnival events such as navy band performances and an army dog show were also held on the same ground however some were not impressed by the spectacle maintaining defiance that the fight continues for the people mai me eda thibunu element ekak ada metana naha e thamai janathawa people kiyana ekak metana naha thora ada metana janathawage kamatta janathawage anumathiya kiyana ekak mona deyakalath naha ithin एगोलोंडा में प्लेस है कि मैं फिजिकल वे बाउटी का प्लेस है का ओन तरह एगोलोंडा एन्जॉय करना पड़ा ना मुझे तामत मिनिस्ट्री इन्हें प्रश्न वाला मिनिस्ट्री फाइट करना 
මිනිස්සු මේ ඔකිපයි මොමන්ට් එක නතර වුණාට මිනිස්සු ෆයිට් කරනවා. ඉතින් මේ ෆයිට් එක අනිවාර්යයෙන්ම අනිවාර්යයෙන්ම අපි මේ ආණ්ඩුව මේ සියල්ල වෙනස් කරන තැනට අපි මේ ෆයිට් එක ගෙනින්න එක ෆිසිකලි අපිට පේන්නේ නැති වුණාට මේ පොළවේ තාමත් මේ ෆයිට් එක තියෙනවා. මිනිස්සුන්ගේ ප්‍රශ්නත් එහෙමම තියෙනවා. The public uprising which saw protesters descending upon the presidential secretariat itself led to the then president Gotabaya Rajapaksa's ouster in July. A policy expert said he believes that the Christmas carnival is a sign the government is using to demonstrate its control. I think there are a couple of things that the government wants to establish. First and foremost it wants to establish that it's very much in control and that This was the headquarters of this great Aragale. They have reclaimed the space. It's a public space. They've reclaimed it, and now it is being used to celebrate Christmas. Secondly, by doing that, they want to sort of say that look, there is no question of any public disturbance or anything like that. The country is safe for people to come and invest, for tourists to come, all of that kind of thing. The island nation has witnessed mass shortages of commodities such as fuel and food. along with soaring inflation this year but the situation is gradually improving government ministers have said with economic growth expected by 2024 in news from nepal charles chobraj a convicted killer who the police suspect was responsible for a string of murders in the 1970s and 80s walked free on friday after nepal supreme court ordered his release owing to his age and health Charles who was held in a high security jail in Kathmandu since 2003 was also suspected of killing two foreign nationals in the Himalayan nation Charles Sobraj a convicted killer who police suspect was responsible for a string of murders in the 1970s and 80s walked free on Friday after nearly 20 years in prison in Nepal The apex court of the Himalayan nation ordered his release owing to his health and age on Wednesday. 78-year-old Sobraj, a French national, was taken to the immigration office in Kathmandu on Friday and was later expected to be deported to France. Sobraj is suspected of killing more than 20 western backpackers across Asia, usually by drugging their food or drink in the course of robbing them. He had been held in a high security jail in Kathmandu since 2003 when he was arrested on charges of murdering two foreign nationals in the Himalayan nation. He however denies killing them and claims charges against him are based on assumption. Sobraj was born to an Indian father and Vietnamese mother. He was also known as the serpent because of his ability to disguise himself following his escape from a prison in India. in the mid 1980s where he was sentenced to 21 years imprisonment for murders he was later caught and jailed in india until 1997 before he returned to france and soccer fans in the indian city of kolkata organized a rally on thursday to celebrate argentina's win in the fifa world cup after a span of 36 years celebrations have continued across the world over the triumph of argentina's team led by lionel messi Soccer fans in India's eastern Kolkata city on Thursday organized a rally to celebrate Argentina winning the FIFA World Cup as massive celebrations have continued across the world to mark the triumph. The fans from Kolkata's Argentina Football Fan Club held cutouts of soccer players Angel Di Maria, Lionel Messi and Paolo Dybala among others up in the air. Cheers for the World Cup winner soared high. as the participants waved flags of argentina and india while dancing we are uh, fans of argentina because of this team because of uh, this person called lionel messi we have fallen in love with this sport because of this man and uh, a person does not win a world cup every other day right uh, so in order to make the most of this opportunity we all have gathered together here in kolkata on the streets of kolkata we have flooded the streets to support this man 35-year-old Messi has burnished his reputation as one of the world's greatest ever with the win on December 18 as Argentina beat France 4-2 on penalties after a scintillating 3-3 draw after extra time. The win came for the country after a 36-year gap. This has cemented Messi's status as a legend among Argentines. 
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night.